Welcome to the official launch of the UNEX Unity Exercise 2024. I am Lieutenant Colonel Roberto Beltran and I will be your Master of Ceremonies for the duration of this official launch. The regional security system is currently partnering with the European Union and CARIFORUM through the 11th European Development Fund program to strengthen the national and regional security architecture in detection, prevention, and management of crime, and strengthening the RSS response framework to critical crime and security matters affecting the RSS subregion. With that in mind, I would like to ask the Commissioner of Police, Acting Ronald Phillip, from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to kindly come and give us some welcome remarks. I have the pleasure of welcome, doing the welcome address this morning so I intend to be brief. So persons who travel this morning, I know that the schedule is tight. So just, I uh, see that you, the RSS delivered you to our beautiful country safely. So we extend thanks to the pilots for making it happen. <laughs> this unity exercise is in keeping with the original security system mandate of strength through unity. This exercise will see us embarking on developing goals and executing plans to deal with issues of transnational organized crime, terrorism, and its associated evils. In recent times, we have all witnessed the rise of arms trafficking as an independent industry within our member states. Today's exercise is ideal as it awards us with the perfect opportunity to strengthen our readiness, interoperability, interconnectivity, and determination in dealing with the scourge of nefarious activity. As a collective, there is no better way to deal with the issues affecting us but in unison. This unity exercise is very important to the Caribbean region as it provides a much needed platform for a large number of participants who are actively involved in the country's national security apparatus to meet in one location to charter the way forward in the development of such a prestigious exercise. Such training exercises are designed to prepare member states for any eventuality which may pose a threat to our region, to our region or issues which may undermine citizens' safety and security in our theater of operation. St. Lucia, the host nation, stands to benefit tremendously from this training as we have unfortunately had a lull in the quantity of training received in recent times. I welcome the funding and commitment from the European Union and the regional security system. This level of commitment and dedication on behalf of our partners will go a long way in ensuring that Unity Exercise 2024 is a success. It is indisputable that failure to unite and work cohesively as a collective entity driven by a shared objective of strengthening defenses on all fronts will inevitably give rise to challenges faced by all governmental entities worldwide. Criminal organizations that operate across borders engage in unlawful activity, in unlawful activities with impunity, illustrating the need for us to join forces and confront present and emerging threats. This presents an opportunity for us to acquire knowledge, foster collaboration, and establish robust networks within our security forces, both in an informal and formal capacities. By ensuring our police and defenses and our defense forces are thoroughly prepared to operate in unison with a clear sense of purpose, we can effectively address these challenges. I also want to offer a very special welcome to our colleague from Guyana, Lieutenant Souvenir. Give him a round of applause, please. Colonel, Colonel Souvenir, who is there with us. <laughs> who is there with us in person at this media launch. Guyana is the most recent country to become part of the regional security system. We look forward to having the full contingent from Guyana at UNEX 2024. Welcome, sir, to the Helen of the West Indies, St. Lucia. The regional security system has proven to be a pillar of hope in meeting with some of our security challenges in times of crisis, whether it be man-made or natural disasters, crime and intelligence, and information sharing. It is my hope that the regional security system will allow for further expansion by allowing more member states within our midst. <laughs> Good 
In the face of crime's relentless assault on our territories, we must stand united, unyielding in our, in our resolve to protect and restore the peace we once all cherished. Just as a chain is only as strong as its weakest links, our efforts to combat transnational organized crime are only as effective as our collective unity. Together, as one cohesive force, we can break down the barriers that divide us and forge a future where safety, justice, peace, and harmony prevail. Let us remember that it is in our shared commitment, unwavering support, and unbreakable bond that we find the strength to face any challenge and triumph over the forces of evil that threaten the very fabric of our societies. Today, at this media launch, let us declare with unwavering conviction that unity will be our weapon of choice in the fight against criminal activities. For it is together that we shall prevail and secure a brighter, safer tomorrow for all RSS member states. In concluding, permit me to use the words of former President Barack Obama, and I quote, the fight against crime is not just a battle of law enforcement. It is a fight for the soul of our nation. We must not only apprehend the criminal, but also address the root that causes that, the root causes that lead to their actions, end of quote. So on this note, I want to welcome you to this media launch. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ronald Philip, Acting Commissioner of Police of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. I am sure that when you mention that th these threats threaten borders, regional and international, that everyone here does agree with you, sir. Um, so I would like to reiterate your words um, in thanking the European Union for funding such an exercise that will bring us together, um, hence the name Unity Exercise. And with that said, with that in mind, I would like to welcome Commodore Errington, Errington Sherlin. Executive Director of the Regional Security System. My apologies. If you, for your, would you kindly come up and give you give us some kind remarks? Thank you very much, Master Ceremonies. The Honourable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, Minister in the Ministry of Public Service, Home Affairs, Labour and Gender Affairs. Dr. Elizabeth Bailey, Permanent Secretary, Department of Home Affairs. Acting Commissioner. Uh, let me say that I, I fully endorse your remarks. I, in fact, I, 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 I perhaps not only fully endorse, but you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> you spoke with such eloquence, and I believe you were perhaps peeping at my notes, but that's okay. <laughs> Mr. Alessandro Tedesco, attaché, delegation of the European Union to Barbados and Eastern Caribbean, the OECS, Carry Common, Carry Forum my colleagues from the regional security system, uh, the senior public officials from the government of, of St. Lucia, other specially invited guests, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all who are present with us and those online, a very pleasant good morning. Firstly, let me bring greetings from our chairman, the Honorable Robson Ben, Minister of Home Affairs of Guyana. Uh, and it is my Distinct pleasure to be able to join you this morning at the launch of the Unity Exercise, commonly referred to as UNIX. This for me is a treasured moment for the RSS as it exemplifies the commitment of the RSS to produce timely, collaborative solutions to the common priority security concerns of our member states. The realization of support for this particular exercise was developed from initial discussions held more than three years ago when my staff commenced their engagement and planning with the European Union delegation office officials for the second iteration of the European Development Fund program. UNEX 2024 will be implemented under the RSS 11th EDF project, which seeks to promote the strengthening of the RSS sub-regional response mechanism to transnational organized crime and other security threats which engender instability in our member states. We at the RSS have had a long and proud tradition of coordinating operational deployments to countries stricken to include not only RSS member states but also non-RSS member states. Those states were stricken by natural hazards, 
social unrest, and other circumstances, as well as leading initiatives to strengthen capacities at the national and regional level in operational response. The RCS, which is now comprised of eight member states, was established to promote cooperation amongst its membership in addressing mutual security concerns. We do so through a bold collective security model, which provides for rapid, non-bureaucratic response deployments from our member states. We have taken on this role with fervor for the past 40 years, mobilizing much needed support to our member states. In light of this critical role, we at the RSS have undertaken to keep a keen interest in developing and upgrading our mobilization plans and our standard operational procedures to give effect to a more secure and efficient response mechanism and to provision for the evaluation of the usefulness and utility of the mechanism to our member states. You may begin to wonder why there's a need for a homegrown exercise that is designed to test the efficacy of our response mechanism. Some of you may not need convincing of this, but for others, I will give you a slight perspective a historical perspective. Between 1982 and present, the RSS member states have experienced almost 100 hazards events, ranging from tropical cyclones to hurricanes to chemical spills to fire, floods, drought, and volcanic activity. The records indicate that approximately 1.9 million persons were affected across this timeline, with adjusted estimated damages to the tune of US $8.87 billion. This demonstrates the severity of the impact that these events have had on security of our citizens and permits one to make valid assumptions about the state of instability created in the immediate aftermath of these events. We also have to consider transnational organized crime, whether it be the movement of drugs, the movement of guns, illegal migration, whether well, we consider violent crime and the use of weapons in violent crime in our region. These are all security considerations that impact our region. I'm sure we can all agree that it is in our best interest that stricken states return to states of normalcy as quickly as possible. However, this is achieved more efficiently when there's a strong realistic framework under which available resources are mobilized to support national response plans by affected member states. UNEX was designed to test just that, the realistic application of the mobilization plan and the accompanying standard operating procedures. At the RSS HQ, we foresee a security environment which may be affected by more serious climatic events and public health concerns migratory pressures and post-conflict and post-disaster economies, and sustained by transnational criminal organizations as a result. The exacerbation of crime and insecurity environments due to the nefarious use of technology and artificial intelligence and their disrupting the availability of credible information required for security response planning and execution, and a revised global regulatory and financial framework which will grapple with the sustainment of fiat currency and corresponding regulation of the financial sector in light of the crypto and blockchain technology, amongst other things. This environment signifies the importance of constantly monitoring the security environment with a view to understanding its, evolu its evolution and evaluating the utility of our response mechanism to these threats. We may necessarily need to upgrade the alliance in light of deficiencies that are uncovered. By the looks of it, it is a significant task, but I assure you, my dear friends, that my team and I remain up to the challenge. We look forward to strong consultations with our member states and engagement with our partners such as the European Union. We need to see how best we can be prepared to tackle these shared concerns. Our cooperative relationship with the European Union is a move in the right direction. 
I want to place on record my profound gratitude to the European Union for its partnership with the RSS over the years and its strong commitment as a steadfast and dependable ally in combating priority security concerns of the RSS. We look forward to achieving the results foreseen with UNEX and the wider 11th EDF project, and I hope to continue the strengthening of the alliance through worthwhile partnerships within and outside of the sub-region. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Commodore Errington Sherlan, Executive Director of the Regional Security System, for those kind words. Sir, at this point in time, I would like to thank you, yourself, um, and your Deputy Director, Deputy Executive Director, and all your directors for all your hard work, um, which they have put into to ensuring that we are where we are now with unity exercise. As you mentioned, this conversation started three years ago. I would like to thank you and your team for an excellent job um, so that we could ensure that we have this much needed exercise in collaboration with the European Union. So once again, I would like to call on uh, Mr. Alessandro Tedesco, um, <laughs> attaché from the delegation of the European Union, um, to kindly come and give us some of his remarks as coming from the donor organization, sir. Thank you. It is obviously a pleasure to be with you here today for the launch of uh, the RSS Unity Exercise, UNEX 2024. <coughs> I carry with me uh, the salutations of our ambassador, uh, Margot Jasa Vasilevska, um, and uh, I'm here to tell you a few words about our motivations to sponsor these events. Uh, this event, which will take place in St. Lucia in April 2024, within the context of the Strengthening Law Enforcement and Border Security in the Caribbean project, which is our current endeavor with uh, the RSS, a 24-month project financed by the European Union to support the capacity building efforts of RSS. This is in continuity uh, with the partnership we previously established with the organization. Uh, the choice of St. Lucia for the conduct of the exercise is not a random one. Actually, one of the UNEX key objectives will be to test the host nation national contingency plans for crime and security at a time of particular stress for the country's authorities confronted with significant uh, uh, threats. The goal will be pursued with the help of security agencies from all RSS member states, inspired, and this is a trademark of, of the organization, by the spirit of solidarity, uh, which we can always find in RSS operations. A few words on the context of these activities from our perspective. Uh, the support to RSS is part of a larger commitment of the EU to help ensuring higher security standards in the region. Parallel to our partnership with RSS, we're scaling up also our cooperation with CARICOM Impacts. We're currently providing uh, software and equipment for the processing of data related to border management control. We should uh, sh soon be joined by colleagues from our SECO program, which is um, our CEPOR cooperation project with all the intention to ha have them on board uh, uh, for the cooperation, uh, for cooperation on the UNEX exercise. I think this is yet one more evidence of the EU intention to provide an increasingly coordinated assistance to our regional partners, up to meet the ever-evolving needs arising from the context. The EU intends to strengthen its presence in the Caribbean over the next months. Most of our cooperation programs with Latin America will soon expand to the region, making your countries eligible to the provision of further EU expertise and know-how. This is, for instance, the case of El Pacto, which will be our flagship program on judicial cooperation, and which has been a, a quite a success in Latin America for the, la for the past few years. Um, this program supports the fight against transnational organized crime, and uh, is due to begin its operation in the Caribbean second half of 2023. This will offer your law enforcement agency and judiciary a wide, a wide range of tools and contacts uh, uh, with their EU counterparts. I was telling to uh, Commodore uh, Shurland that we are also um, in the process of establishing contacts with the European and Gendarmerie Force 
in view of a possible partnership for the delivery of some of the trainings foreseen by our current project with, uh, with RSS. Euro, gen, the European Gendarmerie Force, uh, in, in brief, Eurogen Force, is a European rapid reaction force composed of elements of several European police and gendarmerie, tasked to perfor with performing policing tasks within the scope of crisis management operations. Similarities with RSS structure and mandate are strikingly evident and will hopefully lead to a mutually profitable cooperation. I would like to end my intervention by reminding the words of uh, Ambassador Vashilovska at the last RSS Council meeting in Grenada. It is important to consider European, the European Union not only as a financial donor, with a, we have so much more to offer, and we would like to become a true operational partner, starting with the, uh, with the uh, UNEX exercise, but leading to a much uh, deeper cooperation between uh, our structures here and on the other side of the Atlantic. In other words, we are looking to forward to strengthen our partnership in the months to come. I shall thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Alessandro Tedesco, for those kind words. And I'm sure that um, we all agree that strengthening law enforcement and border security in the Caribbean is much needed and um, very well welcomed. UNEX 2024, the planning cycle is a one-year planning cycle. We initiated the planning cycle by doing a concept development conference a couple months ago here in St. Lucia. We are now here at the official launch, which will be immediately followed by the initial planning conference. Um, in the next two months or so, we will be having the main, the mid planning conference, followed by the final planning conference to wrap up the planning cycle for Unity Exercise 2024. With that in mind, I would like to ask Lieutenant Commander Brian Roberts, Director Training, Regional Security System, to come and give us an exercise overview of UNEX 2024. Sir, please. And this presentation will take the form of a PowerPoint presentation, so you can look towards the screen to our front. But a pleasant good morning to all, all those here in the room. I see a lot of familiar faces, as well as those online. Welcome, welcome, and we look forward to making this a reality. I'm quite happy that we have reached this stage, and we're now ready to continue the planning, as my co colleague, Lieutenant Colonel, Beltran would have said we already started already um, from back in January with the, the senior leaders engagement. Then we had the concept <coughs> development. And now out of that concept development, we develop an exercise specification, which gets all the parameters for the exercise, which I will do a summary of here now in this brief. OK? Next slide, please. So this is the agenda here, as you see it. And we'll be going through them um, to to give you the summary outlining what we are doing for the exercise. All right? Now, just by way of background, we, before we move off here, we would have developed Unity Exercise from back in the 1990s, OK? Out of a need to provide a homegrown exercise for the sub-region, the RCS sub-region. And this was, was um, our focus. And it was intended to be every year. But due to financial constraints throughout the years, it fell off and we were unable to do it. Then we were, were able to pick it back up um, in the last two years, but we did it online using tabletop exercises and command post exercises. And now we're here now doing our first full-fledged field training exercise with actual boots on the ground. All right? So this, this is what this is all about. All right? So we're here. And thanks to the gracious support from our European um, partners, and allowing us to support this endeavor, as you would appreciate, is a quite costly advent in, um, avenger. And we are um, happy that we could collaborate and put it on for the region. And then we hope to continue to do it, hopefully, on an annual basis. But at least, if we can't do it annually, we could at least, that is a full fledged, we can do something online. And at least every two years, we can do a full fledged. So we're working towards that. All right? All right so the aim of the exercise. The aim of the exercise is to evaluate the application of command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, commonly referred to as C4I, and assess the interoperability of the RSS Combined Joint Task Force, particularly 
the ability to coordinate the resources required in operations countering threat networks, i.e. countering transnational organized crime and countering terrorism. And this is as well, these two themes here, the, the transnational organized crime and the, the terrorism is the main focus supported by the project. All right? Next slide. Exercise objectives. You would have heard some of them in some of the addresses, but here we go. The first one is to validate the regional security system mobilization plan. And this is a mechanism in which we use to get our troops from country A, B to country C, et cetera, et cetera, to support a national request. So the member state would have, would have been overwhelmed for whatever reason, need assistance, reach out to the RCS headquarters, and we mobilize that force in to help to give the necessary assistance. There's a plan there that we follow, that we use, and this is the plan we are testing the validity of it, all right, to make sure that it's current, is effective, is efficient, and it's meeting our needs. We're also going to validate the operations of the combined joint task force, and this is a, this is a joint meaning several different dis disciplines within the force. So we have a, a land component, an air component. <coughs> we can have a sea component as well, right? And the combined meaning that different nationalities, so it's multinational in nature, right? So this is the task force, and this is really for the bigger scheme of things. This could be scaled down based on the operation, obviously, but this is the ideal, all right, to move an entire force of over 100 strength, all right? And then there's some sub-objectives of that, of objective number two, to effective use of the standard operating procedures, reports and returns and staff duties, application of the operation planning process is the process we use to properly plan look at the, uh, and do the proper analysis, courses of action, and then conduct the operations based on proper studies and planning. All right? And then the efficient, effective, efficient command, control, communications, computers, and intelligence. So we're using all of those, those, those areas there to develop the exercise. So we, if you don't have proper command, we're wasting our time. If you don't have proper communications, we can't communicate, we can't talk to each other. Right? We need to use the technology that's available to us. Intelligence is very critical as well in operational planning. Right? So we've got to make sure all those areas are locked down. Number three, enhance interagency cooperation and interoperability. And this is something we've been doing for years. We want to make it better. Right? So once we have similar, we tra train to a similar standard, then we can all operate off the same page and be more efficient in how we operate as a collective, as one RSS Security Alliance. And number four, develop, implement in internal contingency crime and security plans of the regional security system host nation joint operations. So this is a feature that we do with all exercises to ensure that there's, some, there's something in it for the member state. So we're just not coming to do our own thing, but you're involved and you're getting something out of it at the end of the day. All right? Next slide. Now this is our training. The country of St. Lucia will be the host nation for... United 2024, and you will you will see there from the diagram that we will be doing training primarily in the cast trees to um, Pigeon Island area, which is the north the north um, western section of the island, Denary on the eastern coast, and then we're going to use the southern coast of Sufre, um Viewfort um, for some of the operations. So we practically will be across the entire country, but we will work out the specifics as we continue the planning process. So that's just um, a quick overview, okay? Exercise design. <clears throat> now the exercise is, is broken up into three phases. Phase zero is what we are doing, have started already, the process has started, all the training that we've been doing, all right? The joint operations and planning, the cyber training, the officer watch, which is a, a bridge watch type, bridge watch keeping type management program that's currently going on, all those trainings we've been doing and that we'll continue to do up to March next year is all geared towards preparing personnel for this exercise. All right, so we started that process already. So in addition to the training, as well as the conferences that are being held, the planning conferences, the site visits, all those are captured there in the phase zero. All right, but we want to do as much training as possible during this phase so that when we come to exercise, we're actually exercising based on the scenarios and the injects coming in. All right. Phase one, the actual execution phase, right? 
And this will start with a staging in Barbados. So we bring all the troops to Barbados, right? They get all the kit and equipment together. They get their, their briefings. They know what they're going to do. They do some integration training, orientation, and make sure that they're ready and fit for the operations before coming into the theater of operations, which is St. Lucia, all right? Having com completed the, the RSOI and the various integration aspects in Barbados, they'll move to St. Lucia and do a quick orientation again in country, and then we move into the, the main events, which is a series of um, activities to test our readiness as an RSS task force. All right? I will include all elements. And phase two, finally, will be the, we have to evaluate, monitor, and evaluate everything that we do to make sure that we are seeing, getting the lessons learned and see how we can improve going forward. And hence, this is the aspect that we will be doing um, the evaluations phase two, and that will be led by our regional observer assessment team, uh, Colonel Ford will head up that, All right? So we do the proper um, evaluations, and then the final report should be shared with the chiefs. And that will complete the three phases. Next, this is a quick look at now how we're going to roll out the action execution phase, all right? So between the 3rd and the 5th, the Combined Joint Task Force arrives in Barbados, all right? And that same day on the 3rd, the advance party, advance party will come down to St. Lucia to start the preparations. Um, but between the 3rd and the 5th, the task force is doing their, their orientation, their integration, equipment checks, et cetera, getting their briefings, everything there in Barbados, okay? And then on the 5th then, they're deployed to St. Lucia, ready for action, so to speak, all right? <clears throat> then the 5th to the 7th, a quick orientation in St. Lucia to finalize, um, finalize um, plans. And then from the 7th to the 10th, the actual exercise where they were getting all the different scenarios of the different activities, security activities that they have to respond to, the troops on the ground will have to re respond to, right? So they all managed by the task force headquarters, all right? But obviously, as you will see in a later style, I'm um, sorry, in a later um, slide, the, um, they're taking the orders from who? The host nation, all right? Because we come to support you, all right? And then... It, we wrap up on the 11th with a hot wash, which is a quick debrief among the troops. And then we have some light activity, a community event. We want to do some public relations event, helping a school or some home or something. But that's up to St. Lucia to advise us. And then we do a cultural event to finish off the evening. And then we do the, fin the formal closing on the 12th and return to our countries, respective countries. So that's just a brief snapshot. But this is just broad right now. We will work out the details in the subsequent um, planning meetings, all right? All right, this is a quick look at the scenario. Now, the scenario is based on a bro the broad um, theme of the security region for Cricket World Cup T20 competition. Whether that's still happening or not, that's not our concern. It's an exercise, this is what we plan it towards, right? And you will see from what we're doing in the exercise, you can respond to any operation, whether it's counter drugs, whether it's terrorism, public, uh, mass code events, we're preparing you for that, okay? Also, uh, as a disclaimer, do not go by the, the stats here. This is all fake, this exercise related. There's nothing I got from the ICC. We all, it's all made up, okay? So that's what we're working on. Exercise scenarios, exercise related scenarios, okay? Right, so anyhow, right, so it's done, it's done on, the, on the premise that the, there will be a major event, sporting event in the region and that we want to secure the region. I'm, and I'm saying sure we would have reached out and asked for, for some assistance, being that, considering that they would have been asked to host some of the preliminary games here in St. Lucia. All right? Um, <clears throat> also, we throw in there that there'll be another, to, to, in, to increase the degree of difficulty, there's another RSS country will also be hosting simultaneously those preliminary games. So we have two, but we want, we, the one in Solution will be the main one, the other one will be notional. So you don't have to worry too much about that, all right? But just to, to get, make you think, all right? Um, right, so, so throughout the unity exercise, our intention is to be able to assist St. Lucia, given the existing crime situation, right? Plus to deal with all everything that can happen or can go wrong with all of these people coming into your country from the international arena, 
right? Which can bring their threats with them. Okay? So all that is what we have to look at. And that's what we aim to do um, um, in St. Lucia. So we'll be supporting St. Lucia in maintaining their, their normal security as well as supporting the games throughout the period that they will be hosted in St. Lucia. All right? Now, the good thing is we have two platforms to plan. We have two exercise platforms to plan for um, this, this um, cricket World Cup. One, we have units, but we also have trade wins. So, the, so, so we thought it necessary to make the link between the, trade, the unity and the trade wins. So hence, that's why you will see that we will do the preliminary games in St. Lucia, and then we, we, we said that they be, the semifinals will be held in Barbados. So then we have to redeploy. Once we finish in St. Lucia, we have to redeploy now onto Barbados to help Barbados now with the semifinal games. Right? So that's, where we, that's, where, that's how we're going to link the two exercises and we're not operating on different tangents. All right? Next slide, please. Right, this just shows some of the different injects or scenarios then that can take place, right, surrounding the, um, the actual broad theme. So, for example, you could have things like um, a major gang crime incident. You can have a public order at any of those mass crowd events. You can have um, a terror, power terrorist attack. Remember, we're going to have a lot of crew, probably cruise ships in port and those kind of things, soft targets. So terrorism is something we have to watch. Human trafficking, all right? Uh, and the normal increase in um, drug trafficking, et cetera. So there's an, a number of things that can happen, um, given that there'll be increased flights into your area, increased um, vessels, and um, cruise vessels especially, all right? And also different mass out activities so apart from the actual sporting event, like for example, a music festival which would attract a big crowd as well. So these things that could be thrown in. But these will all be refined because we have a separate um, conference to deal with the scenario development. All right? Next slide, please. It's a quick snapshot, snapshot, sorry, of the, um, the forces that we participate in. This year, again, will be fine-tuned. But at the moment, we're looking about 187. But um, like I said, as we continue the planning, it will be refined, all right? Next slide. Right. So we have some key players, um, key appointments here for the exercise. And you can see from the top, um, the officer conducted in, well, first of all, let me try, backtrack. The officer scheduling the exercise is Commodore Sherlin, right, who gave the, the permission and the direction for us to, to, to plan the exercise. And then I am the officer conducting the exercise. And Lieutenant Colonel Beltran here is the exercise director. Um, we're in a position now that the, the good commissioner acting will assist us because since he's moved up, we have, we have to find someone out to be exercise director. But I'm sure you got that in hand. And um, the good ACP, um, Thomas, well, until I hear different, is the, is the um, assistant exercise director. Okay? And we have a, a team of, of persons, the head of the validation, um, Lieutenant Colonel Ford, as you see there. Um, sitting around the table, uh, he would, um, and then we have the core planning team, which is um, some of the my Guyanese colleague and ACP uh, Connaught from the Grenada Police Force, and others both online um, who are not here. All right, so we have the core planning team, some mentors, validation team to support Colonel Ford, and also the RSS assistant with support, exercise support, and and finally the the higher command or higher control will come then from the. Host Nation, who will set up their Joint Operations Coordinating Center. Uh, we'll be made up of a joint team of all the services there. All right? Next slide. That's just a, a, a graph of what I would have shown you, but focusing primarily on the exercise appointments. All right? Making sure we cover all the main components. Very critical in there is the logistics planning aspect of it, technical support. All right? Next slide, please. All right, this is just a broad um, structure of framework, exercise framework, showing the relationship between the, the headquarters. So you have the host nation government headquarters at the top, right? Um, supported by RSS off to the left. We'll be performing, the team you saw earlier in the last slide is the exercise control. So we, we act in there as the persons controlling the exercise. But the joint operations and command center directly under the host nation government will be the ones that coordinate and plan it and giving directions to the combined joint task force, which is immediately under it, under it. And then 
Under the Combined Joint Task Force, you see the various components, component commands. You have the Police Operations Company, the Maritime Operations Company, Defense Force Operations Company, right? And those are the component commands working for the CTF headquarters, right? And obviously, we must be supported by opposing force, person who will be acting as troublemakers, criminals, enemy, whatever you want to term it, right? That's, what, that's the op for, the opposing force, all right? Next slide, please. As in anything, we can't do it alone. We must do it with our international support, and we welcome our international brothers and sisters to support us, and they'll be invited to assist us and to attend as observers or in different capacities. Um, I heard um, uh, Mr. Alessandro mention the Euroforce, the Genforce, and, and we will be reaching out to them, obviously, to, to, to support us going forward. All right, thank you for that. And um, the final slide there, right, this is the proposed timeline. So you will see that um, the, preliminary, the preliminary ones we had, so we're now at the June 19 to 23rd. That's where we are now, at the, the um, initial planning conference. All right. Uh, moving through, we have the scenario development in August, right? And then we have, a, um, we're going to have uh, units, but only for the, only for the uh, UNEX command post exercise, but that's only for the command team, the, the headquarter team. And the intention is to bring them here to go through a lot of the paces that they will do when they actually come back in April. So it's to give them a, like a rehearsal, a dry, a dry rehearsal. All right, so that's that um, UNEX in, in August. All right, then the main plan of conference in September. And then the final planning conference in December, and part of that, visit will include a final site visit to confirm that we have everything locked down and be good to go in terms of the training locations, accommodations, et cetera, et cetera. All right? And then big day, 30 to 14th, big period, sorry, 30 to 14th execution. All right? And then we wrap up in June, July with the after action reports. So that's a synopsis there of the unity exercise. Uh, I want to thank all of you so far for the support you have rendered us and we will continue to work to it together because, as I said, it's a joint exercise designed, developed by us, designed by us, for us, the region. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Commander Brian Roberts, Director of Training, for that detailed exercise overview. I'm sure that um, for a few of us who may not have been up to speed with the unity exercise, we can now relate to what is going on. So thank you very much for that. At this point in time, I would like to ask everyone to help me welcome um, Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, the Minister for the Ministry of Public Service, Home Affairs, Labor and Gender Affairs, who is here representing the Prime Minister of St. Lucia as she gives us, delivers the feature address. Ma'am. I'm trying to fit in a shoe that I hardly find an opportunity to do, and that is to represent the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I want to offer an apology on behalf of the Prime Minister, who is out of state, and I know he should be flying in this morning or sometime today. I just want you to um, bear with me that being here this morning is almost like committing a crime, so you'll have to arrest me. On the basis that today is cabinet day, and the prime minister consider cabinet to be sacred, and we do not have any other activity on that day. However, he has assigned me a task on that very day. So it's no longer a criminal activity, it is, it gets his blessings. Um, I look at the activity we have here, which speaks to, um, strengthening security in the region. And we have the, the phrase, I don't know how many decades or, or centuries it has been around, but it speaks to united we stand, divided we fall. And we also speak to unity is strength. And I think it's on that basis that we are gathered here today to address a very serious matter. I have also remembered mentioning 
in other forum that we as um, persons in administration, we find all excuses why we cannot come together. We find all reasons why we cannot dot the I's and cross the T's. However, our criminals do not go through this formality. They have dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. So they are more united than us. And on that basis, I see the need for this gathering today to be more than critical because we have to remain united in order to fight those with criminal minds and criminal intention. Those of us law-abiding citizens, we must remain united. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to extend, as I mentioned, my deepest apology for the Prime Minister, who is unable to be here. I know he would have liked to be here. However, he has expressed confidence in me to represent him. And this I shall so do. On behalf of the Honorable Prime Minister, Philip J. Pierre, and Minister for Finance, Economic Development, and Youth Economy, and the Minister for Justice and National Security, it is my distinct privilege to address you and to welcome you, our visiting friends, to St. Lucia. The Prime Minister and the Government of St. Lucia want to thank the Regional Security System, RSS, for choosing St. Lucia to launch its exercise, Unity Initiative, this morning. I think it is very telling for us. The Prime Minister and the Government of St. Lucia wish to further thank the Regional Security System for responding to our country's call for assistance in March this year by deploying security personnel on the ground to help us combat the escalation in violent gun crimes in the south of the island. The presence and operations of RSS officers in support of our Royal St. Lucia Police Force has bolstered our human resource capacity and technical capabilities in handling the crime situation. Since the arrival of RSS officers, the unparalleled escalation in violent gun crimes had abated significantly, and we want to place on record our gratitude for your invaluable support over the last few months. You will recall that in April this year, the situation with violent crime in the region triggered a meeting of CARICOM heads of government in Port of Spain, Trinidad, to examine crime as a public health issue. The heads recognized the growing threat to regional security from escalating violent crime, including organized transnational criminal enterprises. In response, the meeting decided, among other matters, to take collective regional action to stem the inflow of illicit firearms and ammunition in the region. At that meeting, the Prime Minister made the call for more than a law enforcement response, but an approach that is comprehensive and multidimensional, which seeks to find and eradicate the root causes of violence in the region. Further to this call, in the 2023-24 budget presentation, the Prime Minister coined the theme, health and security, the pillars for sustainability. He stressed that in combating crime, a societal response including family, church, academia, culture, and sporting personalities, minority political parties, and the wider society is absolutely necessary. In light of the government's commitment to strengthen security in the country, this exercise is of great importance and priority to the Prime Minister and his cabinet of ministers. A couple of weeks ago, at the U.S. Caribbean Leaders Meeting in Nassau, Bahamas, on June 8th, 
the U.S. announced a few activities in pursuit of our shared prosperity and security agenda, which include security and firearms trafficking, a high priority area for Caribbean region in light of current state of affairs. In response to a request from the Caribbean leaders, which was tabled at previous summit, the US government made a firm commitment to disrupting firearms trafficking in the Caribbean by interdicting illicit shipments of firearms and ammunition and holding offenders accountable and bringing them to justice. In May, one month after the CARICOM meeting, at the meeting of regional police commissioners in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, Minister of National Security, Fitzroy Hines, gave some chilling statistics by stating that many countries of the region have surpassed previous records with eight of them falling in the top 20 of the world's most dangerous countries based on high rates of homicide per capita. This is not good news. The follow-up question and action is to find out why is the situation so serious in the region and what we need to do to reverse this negative trend in the region. He further stated, the rate of violent deaths in CARICOM member states is almost three times the global average, and added that firearms are used in 75% of all homicides in CARICOM. Of great concern to us is that young people between the ages of 17 to 25 years old are mainly the victims and perpetrators of the gun-related crimes in the region. Closer to home, St. Lucia is a small country of about 180,000 people, and the Prime Minister and the government of St. Lucia believe that one homicide is too many for us. Tourism is the mainstay of our economy, and as such, a scourge of crime can threaten the livelihoods of our people. We want St. Lucia to be a country where residents can live, work, and raise their families in dignity and without fear, and visitors can enjoy their vacation in a friendly and peaceful environment. Caribbean leaders have long advocated for the Caribbean region to be a zone of peace in terms of firearms, conflict, and war, and a region for peaceful enjoyment of life for all. Peace is essential to progress, and without peace, there can be no lasting prosperity. The present untenable situation begs for all hands to join together to fight crime, the crime situation. In this regard, the regional security system, the main regional security agency for Barbados and the OECS countries, has a critical role to play in the fight to combat, abate, and redress our crime and security challenges. Whilst we have mainly occupied, we have been mainly occupied with crime and security issues over the past few months, our focus will soon shift to include responding to natural disasters as the hurricane season is now upon us. It is so timely and relevant for this exercise. And so, St. Lucia is pleased to play host to the launch of Exercise Unity, one of the key strategic initiatives of the RSS, which is geared to assisting participating countries in improving responses to natural or artificial disasters, transnational security threats, and ultimately to improve national regional security. Over the years, when called on to assist, the RSS has responded admirably by providing critical support to member states in disaster emergency responses to include provisions of logistics, restoration of utilities, transportation of food, water, 
and other supplies, such as rescue and protection of lives and property. Exercise Unity provides a tested mechanism for the RSS to fine-tune and strengthen its response capabilities in readiness for future natural or man-made disasters. The training exercise outlined earlier indicates that we are actually focusing on building capacity. And many times we focus on capacity with regards to infrastructure. But human resource capacity is the most important resource that we have. And as minister with responsibility for home affairs, this has been one of the areas that we have strengthened in that department. So that many times we see fighting crime as giving the officers the tools and the ammunition to go out there. But we have not addressed the working conditions of these officers. I have already indicated that we may not have the resources to compensate them, so they have to look at their work more as national service. However, we have seen that these officers need to be treated with a level of dignity, the level of respect, and the level of support. And for this reason, the Prime Minister, having identified security as one of his national priority, is actually investing heavily in our officers by giving them the tools that they need and supporting them in developing the skills and abilities that they need to carry out their work. On this note, I want to commend the RSS for choosing St. Lucia as the base. And I was all in smiles when I looked at the slide presentation and I said we are in for something great. And I look forward to the implementation of this program and I encourage our officers to take full advantage of this opportunity because it is one that was very much lacking in terms of skills, in terms of abilities, and we have new recruits that come in and they will definitely begin to benefit from this opportunity. As someone who believes heavily in human resource development, I know we are going to see great things happening in St. Lucia and we will continue to support our regional initiative to ensure that this program is a great success. I want to commend Guyana for coming on board because we have so many countries in the Caribbean. The wisdom of coming together to secure our space is well thought of. It has the blessings of the government, the prime minister, and the people of St. Lucia. And I can guarantee you that you will get our full support. The Prime Minister and the Government of St. Lucia want to thank the European Union immensely for sponsoring this important interagency and multinational exercise and for all ongoing development assistance given to the sub-region. In ending, on behalf of the Government and the people of St. Lucia, the Prime Minister, I wish RSS Exercise Unity a very successful launch and trust that your delegation will be able to find some time to enjoy the pleasures of St. Lucia. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, for those inspiring words. Honorable Doctor, I would like to reiterate your words in saying, let us remain united. I think that, is, that hit home when you mentioned those words. Uh, and I look forward to the next nine months where we could remain united and keep the planning cycle alive for Unity Exercise 2024. At this moment, I would like to ask the Executive Director of the Regional Security System and the Commissioner of Police Acting of Royal St. Lucia Police Force to kindly come forward as we would like to show uh, in order to demonstrate the importance of unity exercise, we have created a plaque as a small, um, to signify the importance of unity exercise. And we have engraved the dates of the exercise on, uh, on that plaque. And we intend to hand this over to represent somewhat of a baton to every host nation 
um, for every single unity exercise. So, um, executive director, if you would assist me in, in hand delivering this plaque to the commissioner of police of Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the host of unity exercise 2024. Could you please give them a round of applause as we now declare Unity Exercise now officially open. <laughs>